Hello again everyone and welcome to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. You are looking at another Neki Supernova, but this is not the green and cream Supernova. This is the Neki Supernova Ultra Mark II in pink and cream. Thought I would show this to you guys. I'm, um, uh, I have someone who's been asking about this machine and I am getting ready to uh, build, go through the process of um, basically going through cleaning, relubricating, adjusting, and testing the machine. Uh, and this is kind of a good place to talk about this. This machine, unlike some of the other machines I occasionally get, is remarkably clean. There's a little bit of dust here on the bed, but overall, uh, there's not a lot of built up oil. There's not a lot of, there's some uh, lint in here. And again, um, you know, it can be deceiving. You could get a machine like this and say, oh my gosh, you know, the paint, but the, the paint on this machine is almost completely perfect. There's one little nick in the back. Other than that, the machine is remarkably, was remarkably either very well, well cared for or never used very much. Uh, it was also in a case, and I find that machines in cases sometimes suffer less, uh, at least less soiling than some of those in the machines. But I wanted to show this to you today because when I get a machine, uh, <clears throat> I don't pass over buying a machine if it's dirty, if it looks rough. And I also don't assume that because a machine like this is so clean, you know, uh, considering the fact that it's probably been sitting for a long time, it is incredibly clean, not a lot of dust, not a lot of soiling, very lovely paint. And I, am, I got some movement. Remember, I, I did a video on this when I first picked it up, finally getting around to, to working on it. Now, <clears throat> this is, uh, I just wanted to mention this to remind you all, do not assume because the machine looks clean and because it's moving, you'll notice I still haven't plugged it in. I still haven't turned it on just to see what it can do. Because this machine is not... Uh, Neckies move very freely, but this one is dry. I can tell by my looking at it, you don't even see much shine. It hasn't been used in a while because it, I can tell it hasn't been oiled in a really long time. The fact that it, well, it must have enjoyed uh, extra good um, climate control comfort indoors somewhere because it's not frozen. Uh, I can often tell if a machine was put into an attic uh, or some other, uh, uh, you know, inappropriate place to store a sewing machine because um, they often suffer from that alone. So I wanted to kind of uh, highlight this for you guys. I've got my little, I have a flashlight. I wear it on my head, uh, which you know, frees up my hands here. And I wanted to kind of show you, I've been taking my, uh, you can do this with a brush. In this case, there's so little, I've been going in with my Cotton swabs, a little bit of alcohol. Again, be very conservative with the alcohol. You don't want it dripping or splashing on the paint. And I'm just going around and I basically, you know, I picked up a little bit, but not a ton. And uh, what you can do, this of course is the side door and the side door has um, uh, little hinges on it. You can see one right here and one right here. And of course, there's a place for these little pins to go. They, they drop down. When you lift up, you can literally pull. Be careful that you don't drop the the door and you know and bang it up or anything. By the way, this door has a clever feature. I have to remember to put this in the uh, video when I finish. Apparently, there's a little there's a little uh, uh, something to hold on to here made of plastic, and on the inside you pull down, and it swings around in front of the needle to help you see. It's a little magnifier. How clever! <laughs> to help people see how to thread the needle. I thought that was a nice little touch. Anyway, we're going to set this aside. You don't have to take this off for normal oiling, but because I'm I'm basically finally diving into this machine for the first time, I want to be able to get a better view. And since this one comes off so easily, I decided to go ahead and um, pull that off. And you, you guys can also get a better view. And this is also a good place to show you um, let's say you get a machine and you're maybe you're you haven't found the manual. You can get manuals for these online, but let's say you don't have the manual um, or you're thinking about getting the manual. 
or maybe you do have the manual, but reading, you know, looking at the diagrams and the drawings in the manual is helpful, but it's still not as clear as it maybe could be. Um, what I was going to show you guys, because this is such a good example, is you, you know that you want to uh, oil the machine. Well, before you do that, you want to be sure that you've gone in and really given it a good sweeping for any dust or lint. And it's normal over time when a sewing machine works with the needle, you know, uh, puncturing fabric and with thread moving in the through the eye of the needle and, and uh, in tandem with the bobbin case, you're going to get lint. You're going to get essentially textile dust and that's just what happens when you sew. So over time um, you will discover that you're going to need to clean lint. Now you might think well lint doesn't build up you know super easy here but it does get in here over time. Um, by the way this machine I was it's like oh this is interesting. Uh, when they built this machine I guess they decided not to change the color of this little knob and this is plastic and I touched it to see if it would move. But remember always do this very gingerly you don't. In this case this thing moves very freely and we have let's see if I can move this angle for you guys. We have a built-in uh, I believe I'm looking at a needle threader, I think. I'm going to have to go back and look at the manual. Uh, how clever they put this in. Again, this is a, a, a newer addition to the, uh, let's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, to the Supernova line. This was, you know, this, this, this one came out after the Supernova. And uh, I have, uh, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but right here, is a uh, is something that that is 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 it's just like a needle. I'm gonna have to again. I'll have to go and uh, see if I can find the directions in the manual how this is used. But it basically, this thing uh, catches on to the to the needle. Let me zoom in here. I don't know if that's gonna show up for you guys at all. But this little there's a little clamp on the end of this little swing arm, and it it lines up with the needle, and then this this little tiny oops it just flew off there. This little tiny piece here, which looks like a little uh, needle in itself, I believe lines up with your uh, the needle, the eye of the needle. Anyway, uh, but this is something I found while I was exploring. But again, when they came out with the pink version, maybe they had some leftover parts from the prior generation because you'll see over here on the on the uh, there's an adjuster for the uh, feed dogs to lower them as well as this little cap, and they are green, and I believe. Uh, if you guys, if yours are pink, let me know. But I, I sometimes find it interesting that companies will, um, they'll often make updates to machines, but they'll also keep some features from the prior edition. Singer was classic for this, and Necky did it too. It makes sense, um, but they work together, I think. Uh, anyway, let's uh, let's. I'm going to have you guys focus in on here. And a lot of times people will say, well, I'm, I need to oil my machine. Let's say, okay, you know, because I've gone through here, I've gotten the dust and, and any lint that's in there out. Always do that before you put any oil anywhere or you're going to end up with a mess that you'll, you, you will kick yourself for having to clean that mess up. Okay, so what are we doing? We want to know what to oil. And let's say you have the manual and you're like, well, it kind of tells me, sort of. I'm going to zoom in here and I'll show you. If you're not sure, one of the things you can do is I'm going to take my hand, I'm going to put it on the hand wheel, okay, and I'm moving it, and I do have movement here, I'm not forcing this machine, and let's make sure, and you'll see all of these pieces rotating, okay. Now, when you see metal moving against metal, that's a good uh, indication of a place that you really should be uh, applying oil. Now, normally, when you're just getting ready to sew and your machine's all good, it's been reconditioned, overhauled, restored, and or let's say your machine's just in great shape. You use it and you go to oil it. You will put one drop at the oiling places that the manual shows, and if you can't tell on the manual, you can do what I'm doing. You can look here, and this, of course, is the needle bar. Well, the needle bar moves in this, this bracket or collar, and then it moves again down here. So we know we're going to need some, we're going to need oil here. And that's a very important place to have it because the needle bar uh, is one of the hardest working parts of a machine. Um, so you are, uh, you're, you're looking around. In normal oiling, you'll put one drop. You say, well, one drop doesn't seem like much. There's one right there. 
and I'll come up here and I'll put a drop here. You think, well, what's the big deal? Uh, one drop of oil is actually plenty normally when you're simply, uh, when it's time to oil your machine. Remember, there's no reservoir here. The oil sits and it works with these moving parts. Okay, so now I've got, I've covered this needle bar, uh, the needle shaft, and has now got oil. <coughs> However, did we forget something? <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, down here, remember the bottom of the needle bar, I'm going to go ahead and put a drop. Now, then we'll talk about how much oil you should be using. Now, I should have most, if not all, of the needle bar uh, with a nice film of oil. Sometimes you guys will see me do something, and, and I'm going to do it here, which is when I am restoring a machine, I've often used the terms waking up or bringing out of hibernation sewing machines, and that's because they sit for a long time. If you have a machine that hasn't been touched, this machine may have not been used in 20, 30 years. It's very dry. In that case, it's all right to go ahead and put an extra drop. Okay, you normally would not do that, and a lot of times your manual will tell you. It tells you, put one drop and no more. Well, if the machine is dry, I will put two or three drops just to, to kind of, it's kind of like priming a pump, if you will. But once you've done that, when you go back to, to uh, when you return to go and, and just do your regular oiling maintenance, don't use multiple drops, because what, what's going to happen is you will get uh, I pretty well promise you, you're going to get oil dripping and falling and you will end up with oil coming down your needle and it will get on your fabric. It should wash out, but you know, there's no point in doing that. Okay, so that's one of the movements. Okay, so we got our needle bar going. One of the things I was checking as I was checking all of the knobs and buttons here, this is the adjustment for the presser bar spring. There's a big spring here. It's easier to see on older machines, but you can see here and how it gets compressed, right? And that is the control mechanism for the pressure that is on your presser bar, which affects the pressure that your, uh, your sewing foot is going to have on your fabric. And this is adjustable, and it's supposed to be. And when I went to turn it, man, it just, it's just doesn't want to budge. So I put in a drop, a couple of drops of sewing machine oil, and this was probably 20, 30 minutes ago. And now I'm turning it, and oh, I'm getting some turn. I got lucky here. Sometimes you won't get any turning at all. And you'll need to use some heat, uh, maybe some of the penetrant products I've talked about. Now, let's come in here. We'll put a drop. Uh, one of the things you'll notice, and if you do any, if you restore more than one machine, you'll eventually start to see a pattern. The things that get used the most, typically they, they will need lubricating because they were designed for it, but they usually are not frozen unless the machine has sat for decades. But sometimes, even if a machine has been used, if there's a feature, it could be that the sewer had this set up and they may not have touched this since 19, what is 1959, 1960 around when this machine was out. Um, and so uh, I'm on oh, this again, I'm getting gravy here. This was, this was nice. This was not tough. It could have been tougher, right? So I can come this way with it and you can see the spring moving. And of course, Neki, when I put the door back on, you'll see there's actually a numbering system attached to where you set your pressure. Very clever, and I don't know why other companies didn't do it with their machines for a long time. Um, okay, so we've done this, and now we're going to come over and take a look. Now that we've got this moving, let's look over here. I'm going to get another cotton swab and put a little alcohol on it, because I think I, I want to make sure that I'm not looking at old oil. Nah, not really. Sometimes you just have to put your cotton swab in there or a brush and, and see what you see. Now, I'm going to, you notice when you put your hand on the lever of the presser bar, now you see the bar shaft moving as well. Okay, so there's a, there's a, there's a place here above. I'm going to put a couple of drops. And then I'm going to come in below and let's see. I'm going to change the angle here, guys, because the light, the light bulb itself is in our way. Let's see if I can get this lowered. This might be easier for you guys to see. But down here is the is the lower end of that shaft. I'm going to put a drop. 
and then I can pull up. And now I have essentially, uh, there's there are other places to lubricate, but I have actually gotten, um, this can happen, especially if a machine rusts, which this one is not. Um, you can get, um, you can get pressor bars that won't move. Uh, and now you can see, just like with the earlier uh, Supernova model from Necky, you pull up here, and this is usually when you're going to, there are two levels of pulling the, uh, the, the presser foot up. The first one is so you can simply get your fabric out from under. And then if you can come, you can come up again from the highest position, and that's when you're totally locking the, the presser bar up. Um, so you have that option as well. Okay, let's continue on here. Now, in the back, right back here, there is a bolt that this presser bar lever back here, which is mercifully made of steel, eventually later on, even Necky, they would end up changing these to plastic and other companies did too. It drives me crazy. It's a, this is a place that gets used. It works hard. It's stressed. It should be metal. Um, and again, but, but this one thankfully is. This machine is all metal in the places it counts, which is in the drivetrain and, and the pieces that work hard. Now, right back here, I'm gonna zoom in because this is again one of these, one of these areas that sits behind something. See if you guys can see right there, that's a bolt and it's at the center of this lever. So I'm gonna put a drop right there and again, just making sure, because it also uh, rotates, one end of this lever uh, rotates, so I'll put a, a, a drop there, and it's working fine. In fact, it was working fine before, but again, it was designed to be lubricated. Now, we're going to move, we're going to transition to another spot here. And now, what you're looking at here, I've moved around toward the front side for a minute, and I wanted to show you guys something. This is something that often um, trips people up when they're first starting to try to restore a sewing machine. Now, <clears throat> I've mentioned in the past that if your machine is going to freeze, this one is not frozen, but it is, it is, this machine will get the same care any machine gets, even those that are frozen. Because, again, it moves, it's very pretty, but it needs to be cleaned, uh, which I've done with all the lint and it needs to be lubricated. You go through the machine, all of the checkpoints, as if it were a basket case, because you don't assume just because it looks good or has very little soiling or any scratches, that doesn't mean that this machine is ready to sew. I cannot just sell this to someone and say, hey, uh, take it home and have at it. No, you, you don't want to do that. This machine is not ready. The machine has been as I like to say, asleep, and I'd say I'd say this one's been asleep at least 20 years. Uh, it's an estimate, but it's just based on the machines I've seen before. Now, um, the zigzag motion of a sewing machine typically will freeze up before the vertical motion does, but this one is not. <clears throat> now I haven't sewn with it, but this is the lever that that controls needle position. You don't even have to change the stitch width here. What, what, what you can do is simply, uh, uh, and we'll talk when I show the machine in operation, I'll talk to you guys about how to set the width. The width here on this Ultra Mark II Supernova is, it basically works the same way as the, as the green, super, green and Cream Supernova did. It has this big lever, but you have, just like on that other machine, you have needle position adjustment. That was a big to-do because earlier machines did not have that. Now, one of the quick ways to test your zigzag, you can, let's get a good angle here. Here's my needle, okay? When you take this lever and it moves, if yours does not, do not force it. Do not force this lever. But this one works, it's moving great. Now, I want you to look at a couple of things. Look here, look here where my thumb is. Now watch the needle moving. You see it moving from, from right right, all the way to the left, and then if I want to put the needle position in the middle, which is your normal sewing position, you can see that it's there. But I also want to draw your attention to something really important. If you were ever trying to get your sewing machine to zigzag and it's fussing with you, there can be many places that can cause issues, but one of the most common on many machines, not all of them, but on many, including the Neckies, is right here. 
This is actually a shaft, and you can tell because it has a sleeve on it, or a bushing, which is right here. Notice when I move the needle position sent, uh, lever, watch this. Watch this right here, okay? Notice, see it's plunging, it's going in, in there, and that's, this, this shaft is what allows the machine, not just when I'm adjusting the needle, but when I have the machine in zigzag, uh, it's going to be going back and forth. The machine moves the needle back and forth with this mechanism because remember the needle bar is here. It's attached to a bracket which is attached to this shaft. So you can see how this would be a problem and very often this will be stuck. Uh, old oil, uh, stored in the wrong place, it will literally uh, be stuck and you'll need to apply heat. Now I'm going to put two drops here, okay? And just like uh, the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz, we are slowly asking the machine to wake up and take your time. Do not be in a hurry doing this. Just think of it as a labor of love and once you've done it, um, you should be good to go. Again, it's not something, uh, restoring a machine, getting it woken up is not something you're going to have to do all the time. Once you've done that, then you just need the, the simple maintenance that any machine should have. Now, uh, while we're here, we're going to raise the camera just a bit. Oops, come here. Now, I want you to, if you would, take a look right here. Now, when I turn, I've got my hand on the hand wheel. Uh, notice all of these moving parts. We're going to do the same thing that we did from the side. <clears throat> Take a look. What's moving? Let's zoom in a bit and give you guys a little bit better view there. Okay, so we know, look here, we've got we've got this shaft moving, so I want a, a drop here, and then we've also got, uh, sometimes you'll see a hole, which is designed to allow you to put oil and get it to the middle of where this shaft is surrounded by a bushing or a collar here. So in order to get uh, oil uh, everywhere where this shaft is going to need it. Now this piece here, you'll notice this is moving. Hold on. Right here, this is moving with this lever, but this is not. That tells you these two pieces of steel are touching and rubbing and they, they need some lubrication, right? Okay. Now let's, I want a little bit more height here. I want you guys to see from the angle that, that I am. Here we go. Okay, so we've got, what do we have? We have a spot right here, okay? I'll put two, two drops, two is plenty. Now what else have we got? We've got, we've got all kinds of moving parts here. And again, if you don't, if you can't see it, get yourself a flashlight. You can set up a lamp. I have one, of, I've shown you guys in my gear videos, I have this little flashlight that I, it straps onto your head so you have your hands free, but what, whatever works for you is fine. And I'm gonna put a drop. Normally one is fine, but I'm doing two because again, the machine has sat forever. And we've got, we've got moving parts here. So again, you can literally, if you just look, the machine is, is telling me, hey, this is where I need this oil. Now I've got another moving, uh, two parts that move against each other here. And already this machine, just in the, what I've shown you guys I'm oiling, I haven't even oiled the whole machine, not underneath, not above. It's already moving better. Uh, again, oil machines eventually need to, um, to be, to be uh, maintained, right? A real machine needs maintenance. Uh, only things that are disposable don't require much maintenance. Uh, uh, to some degree. Okay, so these two move together. I can show that here. These two are attached, right? Okay, this and this are attached. So I don't need to oil between them because they're moving together. When things are moving against each other, that's where you really want to pay attention and make sure you don't miss any of those spots. Okay. Now I noticed that this is 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 being stationary, but this is turning. So we know we need a, a drop or two here. And again, one drop is all you need when when your machine is already in good shape. But this one is this one's been asleep for a while, so we need to wake wake it up. Okay. So we've gotten all of this essentially taken care of. 
Now, let's take a look up top. We're going to come up and we're going to go to the top of the machine. I'm going to raise my, I think I'm at the, I think I've raised that as high as it will go. Let's see what else I've got here. There we go. Um, just asking my tripod here to cooperate. All right, now we're going to do the same thing. And again, guys, notice how clean this machine is. Um, when I look inside of my green and cream necky, it had more cleaning. It's in, it, it sews just as well and you know as this one's going to. So again, don't let soiling or dust or grease deter you from getting a machine. That doesn't mean anything in terms of its potential to be a good sewing machine. Um, it really does not. Uh, let's see. Okay. I want to get my camera angle here just so. And you guys can see I'm going to do the same thing. In fact, I don't even see a lot of glistening from oil. This machine is really dry, but it's moving. So what are we going to do? We're going to do something similar. I've got a big uh, drive shaft here that attaches to the hand wheel. That has not had oil in forever. And then we've got two points. We've got here and here. So we'll do this. Now what's interesting, if I show you guys, here's the, the lid that I took off and I'll show you, I think I've shown before how these come off and how they go back on. Well, there's one oiling point which uh, is 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 in here as you, the older the machine the more a lot of times you'll have more holes on the top for oiling so this one was designed to you have to take the lid off except for that one oiling point well that one oiling point connects to this little spot here now this reminds me of something I've shown you guys before on a lot of the Singer 66 99s 185s remember the little red felts that they uh, that I've told you a lot of people pull those felts out because they think it's lint. Well, you might have done that with this, but do not do that. <laughs> if when you're getting a machine that's new to you for the first time, it's really helpful to remember to go carefully. Don't go in willy nilly and start pulling things. You want to explore them and see what they are. Because I've dealt with neckies, I, I remember that this is a piece of felt. And it's here because it sits right underneath that one hole in the top of the machine, right? And so um, the Singer uh, 301 had, had something similar. Anyway, uh, since I have the lid off, notice I'm going to go ahead and put this. This, this is basically a piece of uh, felt that's designed to hold sewing machine oil, and then it wicks it. It acts like a wick for the rest of the drive shaft because, remember, we put... We put a drop of oil here, but what about the shaft inside? So they knew this. They knew it would need lubrication. Now, I'm going to come down. I want to pull, let's pull um, the bobbin winder and tire out of our way. I don't want oil on that. We can clean it if it gets on there, but why do that to ourselves? Now, right here, right there, get a better angle. It's frustrating if I point to something and you can't see it, then uh, what's, what's the point? Okay, so we've got this out of our way. Notice I have another, I have a moving part here and a stationary part. So I'm going to go over here and put two drops, okay? Keep the oil away from your belt and keep it away from your bobbin tire. Uh, save yourself uh, unnecessary work. Now, we're going to come back over. And I want you to see that we have quite a few uh, sections in here where we want, we really want to, to make sure we have oil, okay? And Neki at this point has done away with the, the oiling point. The old, uh, like the Neki BU mirror that you guys have seen in some of my videos, some of the earlier Neki BUs, they had holes above. Well, this one did away with it. So. We're going to put, and notice I put several because that's a big cam and a, and a roller piece that goes around. And 
what do we have here? Uh, let's see. I need to give you guys a better angle. Let's see if this is helpful. Okay. Look at this piece, which which is moving, but there's a there's a piece right next to it, right here. Let's see if what I'm pointing at, yeah, right here. Um, I'm looking through the camera to make sure you guys can see it. What do I want? I want oil right in there because that big slab of steel is running along with this cam, right? And then I have, and, and again, when you're doing this, guys, uh, take your flashlight, turn your hand wheel, if your hand wheel is turnable, and you will see pieces that move. And if it's metal and it moves against metal, put a drop. Actually, if, an, if it's a machine you're waking up, restoring, put several drops of sewing machine oil. And your machine is, like this one, going to slowly wake up. Now, I can do this also with my bobbin winder. Uh, one thing to remember about bobbin winders is what, because this bobbin winding shaft spins, if you put a lot of oil, too much, I'm going to put one drop, just one, right there. That's it. Why did I, why don't I put more? Because this oil, if you put a lot of oil on here, it's going to start spinning and flying and it's going to make an oily mess that you will need to clean up. So save yourself that uh, that chore. <laughs> you don't you don't need the chore. Now down here, there's a bolt that this thing swings on. It's swinging fine, but let's just give it a, we'll give it a drop. It may not have had a drop in decades, if ever, since it left the factory. Um, so there we go. And I don't want to wind a bobbin, so we're going to, we're going to come over here. And oh, by the way, there's metal that this door is attached to. So we're going to come here and, and it pivots. It pivots on a, you can see the shaft here, it pivots on just one drop. Again, it's moving, but metal likes uh, oil when it needs to, to move. Now, if you have a machine like this one or any other machine for that matter, and the machine is new to you and you're thinking, well, gosh, I don't even know what half of this stuff does. If that's the case, not to worry. Um, what you wanna do is you're gonna do the same thing that I've shown you uh, in other areas of this machine. You know, you take, if, if, if a button or a lever will move, then look behind it to see what, what it's attached to, right? So for example, when I turn this lever, this moves, right? I have right behind this lever is a shaft and it would like, it, it would like some oil. Now, this mechanism here is for the, <clears throat> excuse me, for the, um, for the cam system that, I don't know if cams were included with this model, very often they were upsells. The, the dealership, they, there was a huge markup on cams. They were basically to help people do custom stitches. Most people never use them, but they were often tempting to buy when people were getting a new machine. Uh, it's like buying fancy floor mats when you're a car dealership getting a new car. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> this divide, this little lever in the back moves and it, um, it unlocks, it pivots this piece so that you can get a cam in and then this piece will ride on the cam. It's basically, you can see the springs here, it's under tension. You see these pieces moving, right? As I pull on this and I'm doing it carefully, thankfully it's, it's will, willing to move. If yours isn't, you know, you have to consider um, penetrance, uh, sewing machine oil, heat. There, you know, we, I've covered in other videos the techniques for how to unlock stuck machines. But again, I'm getting gravy here because this machine was very well cared for. Uh, but it still needs a full overhaul. Don't kid yourself and say, oh, it's in great shape. I don't need to, I don't need to send it anywhere and have anyone look at it. Don't do that. You will be sorry because something on the machine will stop working or it'll have a problem because you assume that it was ready. I sound like a broken record, but believe me, um, it's, it's worth it. Uh, now, one pull on this lever and look at all these moving parts here, okay? So what do I want to do? I want to make sure that they're lubricated. I don't need a lot here, right? Maybe one drop because things are turning, they're moving. But again, I want them to, I don't want them to be overly stressed because 
they are waiting for lubrication they haven't had since 1950 whatever so let's let's be good to um, go. and again uh, when you're here and you get your flashlight and look and you'll see the pieces that move against each other they're not hard to spot right and they pivot right so this piece is moving but it's pivoting around this bolt so we know that the bolt itself uh, is is going to be is going to have friction against the piece that is moving when one piece is moving and the other isn't and and that's how it's supposed to be you it's a or two pieces are moving against each other opposite directions just assume that you need to lubricate it and there, of course we have a big bolt here a big pin that this that this uh, piece here rides against okay so if I pull this all the way, it locks out, and that allows you to put a cam in. One thing to note here, for those of you who are Necky fans, is that this giant bolt, this is what the cam will ride on. This is steel. Eventually, uh, like all the other manufacturers, Necky started to gradually replace steel with plastic, and at some point they put a gear in here that is plastic for their cams. Fortunately, this particular machine and model does not have that, which is a great thing. Um, anyway, <clears throat> if you uh, if you have cams, you even if you don't have cams, I don't have cams to go with this machine. That again, it was an extra accessory. However, I'm still going to. I've, I've cleaned. I've already cleaned out the the lint from this uh, when I opened it up. But, but I'm still lubricating it. I still want it to be ready to go if the owner or a future owner decides they want to use cams. So they don't have to, um, they don't have to take it back and then have someone else work on it. So <clears throat> you'll notice that when, I, when, when you move something, a different button, different things move. So if I take my, my stitch width lever, notice that this is moving, right? But the other parts are not. So this, by the time you get to the late 50s, you've got sewing machines that are much more complex than a straight stitch Singer was. And they are very tough. They're all steel. They are, these are heirloom quality machines. But restoring something like a Necky takes longer. It doesn't really take you any longer to keep one going and maintaining it. You can clean the lint and, and add some oil. It's not hard. But restoring one takes more time because there are more things to look at, more things to inspect, more things to clean, more things to get unstuck, if you will. So that is one of the things that I mentioned to people. Now, over here, this is the reverse button. Like a number of machines from this period, it does not use a lever that simply stays in place. You hold, this it says R for reverse. You push it in and you hold it until you're done and then you release it. Always release these with control, okay? You never want to just do that and let it and let it pop or smack out. Again, it's it's very well made. It's working beautifully, but um, you know, treat your machine the way you would treat anything that you had spent a lot of money on because <laughs> these things were crazy, crazy expensive when they were new. It's just, it's shocking to me. Uh, and so I'm, what I'm doing here is behind here, um, there are, uh, basically behind here is a little lever. It's attached to uh, a shaft that rotates and it's getting a little oil. And now it's happy. It's, it's good to go. Look below there. And again, with your flashlight, you'll be able to see these areas on these machines. Um, and you don't need to oil this. Plastic doesn't, it's in, a, it's in a sleeve here. You don't need to oil plastic. Okay, if you get oil on the plastic, just wipe it off. It should be okay. But uh, the plastic itself does not really need oil. Okay, let's see. Anything up here I want to move? Yeah, so when I move my needle position lever, now this piece is moving. So you get a feel for just how all of these things play together. They're like a little, little band of instruments. So there we go. We've got uh, this up here it has been lubricated. And I've got pieces down here uh, that uh, rotate on a shaft in the center of the machine. And again, you can see them. All you have to do is take the, take the lever and look below and you'll see these. And 
Again, a couple of drops and you're good to go. Again, even though this is moving, it seems like it's happy, but I know this machine is dry and I want it lubricated um, for the next owner. That's just, you know. And I'm gonna put some in here to make sure I get the other side of what's ru ru rubbing up against this big cam. And again, you can t I can tell, I don't know if it's, it's obvious by the way this machine's moving, but it's giving me less pushback. And, and, and it's really not frozen at all. It hasn't been giving me any really, it has not been stuck. It's just been slow because, you know, uh, the lubrication is what allows these parts to move against each other uh, the way they were designed to. Okay, let's take a look. I'm going to turn, what am I turning here? I'm going to turn my, um, I should turn my camera so you can see what i got a hold of here. So what am I doing? I'm, I've got this. This is my stitch length control. And, I'm and it turns fine. It's not fighting me. If it was, I would stop and I would come behind here. Well, now, um, it's, you know, it's not an issue because I can easily um, turn it. And there's, you know, any, any metal pieces that are attached to it. You, because they're moving, just make sure that they're lubricated. And we, again, I do this with all of my, of my knobs and buttons. And I do it because I'm trying to make sure, again, in the future, that any of this that needs to be adjusted will work fine, right? And, and then you push thing, you put things through their paces, right? To make sure that the oil is getting worked in there. If you get any resistance, stop, but this one is not. This one is not fighting with me. Okay, uh, last but not least, we will take a look at the hand wheel and the clutch knob. This is an area that definitely uh, requires um, uh, opening up, cleaning, oiling. It's a very important part of the machine, and uh, I will show you guys how that's done. Okay, guys, I changed the camera angle. I wanted you to get a better view of this. Now, if you remember the Necky Supernova video I have done with the cream and green two-tone machine, you will remember that the hand wheel was beautifully polished aluminum and the, uh, the clutch knob was also polished aluminum and then this was painted, uh, the hub here was painted steel. Well, on this machine, Necky decided to skip that and this is still metal but it's painted and it's beautifully painted and it looks pretty good. Uh, there's a nick here or there, but overall it looks incredibly good considering its age. But again, this was an example of where I think Necky was saying, you know what, we could probably save some money by not doing the polished aluminum. But don't let that deter you because remember what matters in terms of a vintage machine being reliable, being heirloom quality as I like to call them, is the drivetrain. Any part of a sewing machine that works hard, you want it to be steel. You don't want anything that's under a ton of stress to be plastic. And eventually that would happen in sewing machines. So if you have a vintage sewing machine, no matter what brand, uh, if, it's, if, if it's all metal, but you say, yeah, but, but and this, this, this actually is metal. And if you're not sure, you can test it. If it's painted, you think, well, maybe that's plastic. Take a, a magnet. And uh, the magnet, if it sticks to it, will tell you if it's steel. It won't tell you uh, if it's aluminum. Um, but again, when you have things like these dials and buttons that are plastic, as I've mentioned to you guys before, that's okay. That's not a problem. Always make sure that the steel that is behind these is moving, has been cleaned and lubricated and is functioning. And these pieces will be great. If you try to force these when a machine's been sitting forever and they won't move and you strong arm it, then you will be very unhappy because you're asking plastic to, 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 to do something it wasn't, it was never designed to do even when it was new. Okay, so uh, like the other Necky machine, I'm going to loosen, hold your uh, clutch knob and then turn to the left. This is turning fine, it's not fighting with me. By the way, if you use any screwdriver, in my case I use these screwdriver bits, make sure that the screwdriver bit is narrower <clears throat> in width, it has to fit the slot. These are all straight head, this is not a, a Phillips. They weren't using Phillips back then, I guess. Anyway, make sure that the width of your screwdriver bit is narrower than the length, uh, than the diameter 
of the screw hole. If it's wider and you're not paying attention or you're getting in a hurry, uh, what will happen is you'll end up scraping paint off. And that would be unfortunate since this machine has, has made it so long with virtually all of its paint intact. Again, if we wanted to be picky, we could find there's one nick here, one here, and then just one on the pink. But for a machine of this age, it's very seldom I get a machine with paint in this condition. Um, now, I'm going to loosen this screw. I haven't loosened it all the way because I'm pretty sure, if I'm remembering, I don't have to to get the knob off. So again, hold the hand wheel, turn. Uh, if the machine was facing me, it would be turned towards you. Be careful, hold on to this because there may be a washer behind it. So notice I'm kind of, I'm, I'm holding the wheel onto the hub as I do this because you don't want everything coming off and crashing down on you. It shouldn't, but uh, there we go. And you see that beautiful piece of steel. And again, I'm, this here is also steel. Eventually, I think they went to plastic, but this is, uh, this is metal. They just painted it instead of, whoops, going with um, uh, aluminum. So, and I think I heard one of the little screws just drop. So, word to the wise, always pay attention to where your screws are. Anyway, uh, but I have that. Now, this is like on the earlier supernova. You know, looks seems to look fine. There's a little bit of dust here. Normal. Again, very normal. Nothing, nothing harmful about that. And then we have here, this is, if you look at this, um, this is the clutch washer. Now this washer is a little different in that it is seated um, onto the hub a little bit differently than the other supernovas was. Now, uh, this hand wheel will come apart. Most necky hand wheels, and I would say about 90% of them, if they have not been restored, the necky hand wheels don't just come off like that. You, you may have to coax them, and I'm going to do a different video on this, because, and I've had people ask me, and I've tried to demonstrate it before, there are ways to get the hand wheel off, but you have to do it gently. And this, even this machine, as great as it is, it might require a little coaxing, a little penetrant, uh, maybe even some heat because of the high quality of engineering that Necky had. The, uh, the, 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 the closeness of the parts is so exact for a machine of its era. Uh, the only downside is if nobody maintenances it for 20 years, it takes a little longer to, to, to sort of get it to come apart. But we'll take a look at that as a separate piece. But I want you guys to see that you're going to be basically obviously the threads of your clutch knob you definitely want these threads lubricated and you can do it one of two ways you can lubricate here uh, you can do it here just make sure you do because again we don't know you don't know how long it's been since this knob was even loosened so um and you cannot, by the way, attach this with one screw. So um, when you find that screw on the floor, <laughs> like the one you heard me drop, um, uh, you'll definitely want this to go back in. And by the way, of course, I didn't show you on that other screw. This will all be coming apart again. But again, you want uh, a drop. Just one drop of oil is plenty for this. But again, it was designed to have a thin film of oil on it. And once you've done this, some areas of the machine need oiling more than others more often. Okay, your needle bar is your needle bar and some of the undersides of the machine are going to be particularly uh, needy for that. Anyway, we've covered everything above the machine. We'll talk more about the hand wheel later in another video. And then we have the underside, but I thought I would try to keep this video under an hour, so we'll do that next time. But thanks for watching, guys. I wanted to show you uh, the primary purpose of this video, really. I've shown you guys how to clean and oil machines before. I've shown you Neki Supernovas, but I really wanted you to see a machine that is remarkably clean, but it doesn't mean you can simply plug it in and sew away. Machines that have sat need to be overhauled. They need to be woken up. They've been in hibernation and whether they're dirty and nasty or 
beautiful and clean like this one, they still need the full servicing. And this really simply, in this case, um, the, you know, the prior owner didn't abuse this machine at all, but it's just time. Time, things, machines don't like to sit, they like to run. Um, when a machine sits, it, it goes into hibernation and it needs uh, time and care to wake it up. But once she's woken up, uh, again, there will be, I'll be putting it through its test stitching and contacting a uh, prospective owner. Um, but anyway, if you guys have uh, ever had a machine that surprised you or maybe you thought it was going to be in better shape than it was, <laughs> let me know. Put it down there in the comments and we will see you in the next video.